tonight study the Bible, Mark chapter 12, 28. It's going to take a little bit of time. And we're going to do it slowly. This is why we do not do the entire chapters at once. And I'm telling you, listen, I'm sorry, but if your church, okay, Mark chapter 12, today, this Bible study, Mark chapter 12, this day, we're done in a 45 to 60 minute lesson, you're not feeding the sheep. You can take time and ought to take time with verse by verse teaching. I'm not talking about preaching. We're not preaching. I know sometimes I do. We're not preaching. If you're going to do a Bible book study, verse by verse. A lot of times I would believe that many pastors don't do it because they don't know what they're talking about. One of the scribes, and those are the ones that handle the scriptures, the letters. We just got done with the Sadducees. Now here's the scribes. This is usually the three men, you know, tag team. Having heard them reasoning, and reasoning is an act of drawing a conclusion based upon facts. So everything Jesus says, the Holy Spirit is reason by facts. The Holy Spirit chooses the words particularly that you're not ought to mess with the words together, perceiving that he had answered them well. Well, he put them to shame. Now, answering them well is, oh, okay, you know, this today's thing. Well, you know, we gave an answer that's okay, but that's not what Jesus did. He put them in their place. That's not happened amongst Christians today. That's not happened in the churches. I mean, we ought to be telling the Sodomites, you are an abomination. You need to repent. We ought to be telling those other people that were so confused, God made them male and female, no other. What is the first commandment at all? I mean, we ought to be teaching the worth ethic. It's your job, you do it. And you don't work, you don't get paid. So which is the first commandment at all? Now, we know there are ten. Actually, there's more of ten. And the very first commandment, actually, in the Bible is, don't eat that fruit. That's what we're not talking about that. You see, the scribes, again, are in charge of the scriptures. They would be more knowledgeable of what is written because they would rewrite the scriptures when a particular page, a particular passage has gotten ruined with age. It has, I mean, if they were to take a look at my street preaching Bible, they would recopy it. Sweat and pages torn out and names all over the place and people are met and asked to pray. I mean, they would redo it. And with that re in that writing, they would recognize what the scriptures are. The, the commandment that you don't see in the law that happened is David, Solomon, and all the kings, would, they were scribed by the Holy Spirit. By the law of Moses, they were to write their own Bible. And it's funny, there's a great controversy the King James Bible. Yeah, but the King James Bible follows the law because the kings were the right. Now, King James didn't write himself. He applied men of scholar to do it. So what is the first commandment? Oh, that's the question. And the, case, the answer is very... Let's take it verse by verse, shall we? Jesus answered and said, first of all, the commandments, plural. First commandment, he says commandments, plural. Let's, let's look at the word. Hear, O church. 
That's not it. If you're going to rightly divide the, 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 the Word of God, and I don't know if I wrote it in one of my commentaries I'm writing, because I'm writing three of them. Obadiah. Who are you talking to? Are you talking to the church? Are you talking to Israel? Are you talking to Gentiles? Are you talking to the world? Who are you talking to? So when... I had to check my hose there. When a church goes running to passages and it says, Hear, O Israel, there is no church yet. Subject of Jesus is Israel. The Lord Jehovah, our God Jehovah, Israel, is one Lord. Now that's the problem the Jews had with Jesus. Because Jesus called himself God and the Jehovah Witnesses are wrong because the whole problem with the Jews is we got one God. You see that, Jesus? You said it. But it ain't God Jehovah over here on, page, on the left page, and it ain't Jesus Christ over here, God, on the right page. It's Jesus Christ, God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Jesus, center page. One in one. There's not two gods. Now, that problem is the problem the Jehovah Witnesses have. You see, the Jehovah Witnesses go into the Bible with Jewish aspect to gods. No, there's none. You are wrong. So to say that Jesus never called himself God would be, what is the complication of the Jews and the complications of Jesus for the Jews is he proclaims to be another God. No, he does not. He proclaims to be Jehovah. He is the man born of a virgin by God. He is God that came out of that tomb. He is the man that died on the cross. He is the God that settled on the right hand of the Father. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, Jehovah, the Jews, with all thy heart. Of all your inward lovings, all your your inward adamase, all your inward coveting, all your hearts, all your feelings, all your cares, all of all that. Because Jeremiah says your heart is the source of wicked above all things who can know it. You are to give your heart to Jehovah. They're not doing that in Israel. Let's go over to the to the to the to the, the Holy Land. That's what Jeremiah did. And Jeremiah went over there and preached. He didn't go over there, oh, this is you know the sightseeing tour. With all thy soul. Now your soul is your eternal. And even for the Jews now in the law in the old testament where they are. And like I said, it's kind of dispensation where Jesus lived. But the fact is, their soul, when they died in the Lord, went to Abraham's bosom. If they died outside the law and God, they went into hell. So your eternal, all your all, give it to God. All thy mind, everything of your understanding, everything of your thoughts, everything you're thinking about. You got a test, you say, you pray to God. You ask God. You better study, but also ask God for help. Don't think God's going to give you the answers on the test if you didn't study. I tried that. It don't work. You get a very bad grade. And in my time, we had to bring our paper home and get our parents to sign it. 
with all thy strength. You know, you put the muscles on. You lift the weights. You carry. You give that to God. Because you know what? Your heart can go. Your heart can be broken by man. Your heart can have a heart attack. Your soul is conditioned to, 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 for them, for them, not the church age, for them, Abraham's bosom or hell. Your mind may get confused and scattered. You may lose your mind. Your strength fades. Your muscles give up. This is the first commandment. Wait a minute. I thought the first get. We'll get to that in a moment. I already said the first commandment. Don't eat that fruit. But we're, we're in the law. So we have here a disgruntment. Because we know the first commandment is love the you know, God is first. We'll get to that. There is no discretion of the scriptures. And he said, and the second is life. Two commandments. Namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, how you want to be treated... You better treat your neighbor. And the neighbor does not mean the guy or the tent next door. The Old Testament. It would be everybody that lives in your town or your city or your neighborhood or your country knowing Israel. Their neighbors would be all the Jews and all the heathen. And the Jews had a prejudice against the heathen. Jonah did not love the Ninevites. Peter did not want to go to the Italian man. There is none other commandment greater than these. Now he didn't say there was no other commandment. Get that. But he says there are no other commandment that is higher and greater than ours. And you got the, the seven day Adventists out there and we can't, you know, have anything to do on the Sabbath because we're to violate we're not to violate the Sabbath and those Baptists are the Antichrist because they meet on Sunday. I wonder how they would be if you were to take your candy wrappers and let them get blown in their yard. I wonder how be friendly with you if your dog goes over and does his business on their lawn. I don't know how it would be if you were to, you know, out there Saturday morning bright and early or Sunday morning bright and early. Yeah, they got your stereo going while you're cleaning your car. That's not loving your neighbor. You're getting mad if you hate them. So what we have here is what we have is called the Shema. I may not be pronouncing it correctly by the Jewish law. And this is, we're going to look at it in a moment. This is to mean hear. Shema, to hear. And that's what it said. Hear, O Israel. And what Jesus Christ is actually doing, he's quoting the law. And if we go to Deuteronomy, and we will, Deuteronomy, And a lot of churches, I'm sorry to say, well, here we are in Genesis 3, 7, 8, and then we'll be here in Zechariah 8, 10, here we are over in Matthew 7, 8, here we go, in, and we're in Revelation 1, 26, and now we're over here, 1 John 3, 6, and we're running in a race, and the Bible verse is coming around the fourth corner, you see the checker play, here comes three or four Bible verses that are coming, and it's a three or four, and so it's a, John 3, 16, wins in the end, everybody's still back in there, and <laughs> the very first verse because they can't turn their Bible quick enough. That may be another pure for that. They don't want you to follow because they may slip another Bible verse on you. I mean, I had it. 
I had a preacher <clears throat> in Ormond Beach. Verily, verily, truly, truly. <laughs> yeah, you know that truly, truly was that truly, truly was another Bible verse. Uh, version. So Deuteronomy, am I going? Yeah, Deuteronomy six four. Hear Shema. That's Hebrew. In the Hebrew Bibles, it would be Shema. S H E M A. Shema. Hear. Now, this is Jehovah speaking through Moses. It is Jehovah speaking in Mark. Hear, O Israel, not the church. And I, I was in a church in, in uh, Oak Hill, Florida, where there are Christians in the Old Testament. Boom. Hear. O Israel, Jewish. The Lord, look at that capital, O capital, R capital, D, that's Jehovah. They don't have the, the abbreviate, the, the, the all capitals like that in the, in the Greek. Okay? A little Greek. We, get, we, we, can do, we have to do a little Greek. We have to do a little Hebrew every once in a while. The Lord Jehovah, our God, is one Jehovah Lord. Jesus said, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear, O Israel. Exactly what the Shema says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, Jesus says, in the script, with all thy soul. That's what Jesus said. With all thy might, that's what Jesus said. So, we have the Shema. We have Jesus. With all thy might, that's strength. Jesus puts in thy mind. Jesus kind of added Heart, soul, mind, and might. So Jesus comes up and he says, listen, give it all your mind. Because you've had all these years of thinking of, of crap. <laughs> thinking of sin. Thinking the queen of heaven. Thinking that God gets away with sodomy. And your thinking's wrong. Your heart is wrong. Your soul is wrong. Your strength is wrong. And you have failed. And this stuff is going on in Israel today. As is written in Jeremiah. Never mind America. America is not in the Bible. But Israel is. And they're performing the same sin. That Jeremiah was witnessing. The church is not given to sign. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and they're not in the heart. So it's kind of weird that. Leviticus, again, we got to go to the law, law uh, 19, I think it is, I'm having a hard time reading, I apologize, 1918, now about your neighbor, a Jew, talking to Israel, thou shall not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. There's your neighbor. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord Jehovah. There it is. Okay? Don't, don't talk about your neighbors. Don't talk about 
you know, the, the, the one selling the apples or, you know, the one selling the beef or the guy who sold you the doves or your neighbor over here or uh, I believe King Ahab was the one that grudged because Naboth wouldn't give him his field. They were both Jews. Okay, so there's that. Now let's go to Exodus 20. Exodus 20 is the Big Ten. And let's look at it. And you take the Ten Commandments and you can break it down into two. You say, what are you going to do, Stanley? And God spanked these words saying, Jesus spanked these words saying, God spoke into these words saying, as he's doing now, I am the Lord Jehovah thy God, talking about Israel, I can say Jehovah, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, Israel, out of the house of bondage, okay? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the first command. Thou shalt not bow unto thee in the graven image. Thou shalt not like us anything that's in heaven above or any like this earth beneath the, and that the water and under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, Jehovah, God, and the Jewish God, this is the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me. See that word love? That's important. And keep my commandments. Okay? That's the first commandment. God first, no dollies, no images, no thought of images. And you blew that out the window if you're going to be a Christian and have Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. And there are religions of the past of Babylon and, 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 and Babylonia and Egypt and all that. They had their little carved dollies. That's real. But we're not talking to the heathen. But let me show you something. And your little carved knick-knack patty wax give the dog a bone which is unclean. And if you gave him a bone, a bone is unclean for the Jews. And you got, you know, Joseph and Mary and the uh, little baby. And you got the Magi. And you got the shepherds. And you're lying against the scriptures. And you got that little thing and figureheads and all that. That is an abomination. Well, we're not worshiping. Do you just throw them in the box at the end of Christmas? Or do you wrap them up, treat them all night, dust them off? That tree of Jeremiah chapter 10, do you bow down before it to give it its water? Do you bow down to put the presents underneath? And do you bow down before it to get the presents out? And do you forget the present that Jesus Christ is the gift of life? And you put all the work in the kitchen for the great meals and all that, like Martha. Okay? That's the Gentile. We're not looking at the Gentile. We're looking at the Jew. You want me to go Gentile? I can go Gentile. But we're not going to do that. I'm not going to say anything about Christmas or Easter. Too late. So the first commandment is God first. But Jesus said the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. With all your mind, with all your strength. For the Lord our God is one Lord. That does not say that. Okay, number six, uh, verse six, excuse me. Oh, wait, verse seven, commandment number two. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God is in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. So the Jews don't mention or spell out God. They will write G-D. Because they reverence the word God. Don't dare get a, a Jew, an Israelite, to have used the name Lord in, in vain. 
Now the Gentiles wouldn't use the Lord's name in vain. Never, no. I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing, nothing but the truth. So help me God and your nose keeps growing, your nose keeps growing, and the nose keeps growing. Well, I want to thank you, Lord, for being in your house this Sunday morning, the Lord's day. Lie, lie, taking the name, name of the Lord vain. And that prayer you did it really vain. And how many times you mentioned Lord vain. Vain means worthless. No context. Oh Lord. Oh Lord have mercy. That's vain. And you will get to call them in. My Jesus, Jesus, my sweet Jesus. Lord, sweet Jesus. And it's vain. But we're not talking about the heathen. We're not talking about the church. Because they're, no, they're not in the picture. We're talking about Israel. So we got two commandments. God and no dollies. God and you reverence his name. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days. And this is about the, the Sabbath. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It goes down to verse 11. Now the Jews honor the Sabbath. And they still do today. You don't do nothing on the Sabbath. Why? Because that honors God, his creation. Of six days he created, the seventh day he rests, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. So you have God honored as no knick-knack, paddywhack, graven images, though they've all failed. You honor God, his name, you honor God as a creation. Commandment 1, Commandment 2, Commandment 3. These three commandments puts God first. These three commandments, the Lord our God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord the God with, with all thy heart, with all, thy, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, in that no graven images, No molten images. Honor and regard God's name as holy. And in God, the God, the creator. Those three commandments is the first part of the Shema. These things lump into one with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and you notice how these three is what is vacating from the education system of America. They've already been exited by the, the people of Israel in the history of what we've been reading in the Bible. With their heart, with their mind, with their soul, and their strength, they're going to take Jesus and put him nailed on the cross. Crucify him. That's not honoring God. But the three commandments put forth to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and saying, oh Lord, and all thy strength. This is the first commandment. God first. God only. Jehovah. Okay, ready? Now we're not going to read it, but look at Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and mother. Well, thy father and mother, don't they live next to you as your neighbor? Next command, verse 13, lost in number. Thou shalt not kill any Jewish person in the congregation of the children of Jacob, it'd be very well for you not to kill any of them. Your neighbor. Next, verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. You should not take your neighbor's wife or a father's daughter and have sexual sins with her. Verse 15, thou shalt not, not steal. Don't steal from you. Now you see what I'm saying? 
The first commandment, the first three, are God. The last seven are your neighbor. Because you can't kill God. God's not your mother. You're not going to commit adultery against God. He has no wife. Thou sh you're not going to steal from God. Thou shalt not bear false witness. All right, you can lie against God, against thy neighbor. And to sum it up, the, the chapter 10, which is broken down to, to 9 and 10, and keep the dollies in the Catholic Church, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. So there's the second part. Jesus says the first commandment is all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, and all thy strength. Give God all your heart. Give God your soul and your life afterwards would be very safe. Give God your mind. Give God your strength. No idols at all. His name, the Creator God, the Sabbath, boom. That will keep you well. You know, there are many religions today going to the Gentile, uh, uh, including the Catholic Church, they break away from the creation. They laugh at the creation story. I don't know where Israel stands. And then when you pick up Commandment 4, to 10, it's all your neighbor. So when you go back to Mark chapter 12, you are looking at the Shama, verse 29, but the Shama put an even aspect to explain what Jesus really said in aspect of the Ten Commandments is broken down in two fields. And Jesus answered him, first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is one Lord. Shaman. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. No graven images. The name of the Lord, God the Creator, Sabbath. There it is. If you break from any of those three commandments, even as a Gentile, even as a Christian, you're in trouble. And I'm telling you, let me bring it to the, to the church. The false Bibles, the false prayers has violated the name of God. I have been in church, but, and you walk in there and there's this engraving face or a picture. And this building is dedicated to such and such who started this building. I thought the foundation was Jesus. And they didn't do very well because they sold the church to a to a uh, a cult <laughs> religion. Okay, and he says the second light, namely this: Thou shalt love the neighbors thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. That's commandment four to ten. Love your mother and father. They're your neighbor. Don't kill. Don't murder. Don't don't have, don't you know commit adultery. Don't covet. And all of this in love. Now, the shaman in verse thirty and thirty-one is everything in love because you can serve God with no love. You can be nice to your co-worker and not love them. You just do it because being proper. It's all in the motive. 
You can do your boss good and be a brown noser. And you have other intentions than your boss. While you're stabbing them in the back to get the position. And the thing is, we've got to love, and this is where we can bring it to the church. We've got to love the Lord. And we've got to love our neighbors. And Jesus said, go into the world and preach the gospel. You don't love your neighbors if you give them your church. Because that's not what Jesus said. You can fill your church with all your neighbors, all your co-workers, and they die in your church and go to hell. And you go before the throne of God, I mean the judgment seat of Christ, and you get up there and you get no crowds and you have the you, you are the best person that brings people to church. But you didn't bring them to Jesus. There's no love. And the scribe, verse 32, said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. Jesus always thanks the truth. And if you want these verses, let me bring them up here. Numbers 23, I hope, 19. Hebrews 6, 18. And Titus 1, 2. You will never find God a liar. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Notice how the Jewish higher ups, the higher authority, has been speaking well to him, to his faith. And who Jesus is. They, I believe they believe, they, but power says for envy. You know what's funny? I remember this VBS, there, there was one church would have it. And then that one church would have it again. And I started seeing signs in another church. And I started seeing signs in other churches. And you drive to your church, a far distance, King James Bible believing church. And you see all these churches, guys. And then I'm driving by, going to church, and I pass the Catholic church, and they got a VBS sign in front of their church. And the VBS is going to do against the, the neighboring VBS because, you know, this pastor is going to be dunked in the water more times than the cupcake eating pastor over here. That's not love. He says, Master, I don't know how I said that. Dasha said in that truth, there is one God. But there we go. You know, he just told Jesus, we believe there's one God, one Jehovah. All right, great. You're not him. You're a master. You're not the Messiah. Master. M-A-S-T-E-R. Messiah. M E S S. I A E R. I, I A A. I was looking at Master. I A H. Uh, you know, the spell is around Master, but it don't run it right. Well, the Bibles, are, you know, they're almost right. K J V and K J V. Not the same. R S V. Not the same. N I V. Not the same. Mama, Mama, Mama sent you the story. She said, Junior. Go to the store and get me some milk. I'm making I'm making pudding. Need milk. Junior goes out of the store. He gets in there and he gets L Y E and brings it home. That's not going to make pudding. Thou hast said the truth, for there is one God. Yes, and Jesus is Him. There is no other but He. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. And Jehovah. That's where the Jews get primary in trouble. Jesus possessed to be God, and he is. Jehovah Witnesses are full of it. The Shama says, 
one God. Amen. But Jesus is one God with God. One times one times one is one. All right. So that's the problem the Jews have. That's the problem the Jehovah Witnesses have. To love him with all thy heart, with all the understanding, and all of the soul, with all the strength. Boy, he was listening. Because you don't find understanding in the Chalma. Not Shama. Yeah, Shema. Man, he picked up on the understanding. Now, the understanding, look at verse 30 again. The mind. You want to understand God, you better love him. Back to 33. So he was listening, understanding with all I saw, with all I strength, with all that his neighbor as himself is more excuse me, is more than whole burnt offerings and sacrifice. Goats, lambs, bullocks, wheat, barley, salt, doves, pigeons. We could bring all the things prescribed in Leviticus. But what you're telling me, Lord, is we could do all that, but it's something greater than that. Loving God and your neighbor. Now look how he put it together. With all thy heart, love. Love him. With all thy heart, with all thy understanding, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and to love his neighbor as himself. Now he focuses all around love. So you look at the transition going into Acts and the church age. Okay, we don't have to bring burnt offerings. We have a love that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, there's the sacrifice, that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's never happened in the history of Israel. King Saul bring you know, you know, all this stuff we say for the Lord for, for sacrifice. And, and and Samuel tells you, listen, God, and I, I'm not quote praying, you know, you give all the sacrifice. God wants obedient heart. That's what it's saying here. The love is the obedience to God. You can every Baptist, well not every, most Baptist preachers are gonna hate me for what I'm gonna say. You don't have to tithe in, in, in the tithing place if you love the Lord. If you love the Lord and you want to pay your bills and you pay the bills and you're properly paying the bills and you, all you got is $10 and that's all you can give the Lord, that's not 10%, but that $10 you're going to put in the plate, you're going to cheerfully give it to the Lord without the pastor, you know, 10%, 10%, run to Malachi, 10%. And you feel that God's going to wreck your entire life. You feel that God's going to bless your business. You're going to get business because of 10%. You got a problem. Now we're coming, we're in the law. You know what the law would prescribe? It's not taught in your Baptist churches. They had to give 10% of their earnings. 
They had to give 10% of their gardens and fields. They had to give 10% of, of the cows, 10% of the billy goats, 10% of the puppies, 10% of their, fam their, their firstborn children, 10% of the dough, 10% of the spices, 10% of everything. Well, no Baptist preacher today wants a 10% of your puppies, 10% of your kitties. He wants 10% of your Georges, your Franklins, your Benjamin Franklins. That's what he wants 10% of. And, uh, your, your, your financial will be safe and secure. Give, no, he's afraid of the financial financing of his living and of the church. That's why he's got you giving 10% and faithfully giving 10% so he knows how much money he's going to have every month. Don't fool me. I used to take care of checkbooks until my mind and my health was going bad. God wants you to love him with all that you have and all is not always your money. It could be your time. It could be your effort. It could be what you read. It could be what you walk. It could be where you where you walk, where you drive, what you do, your gasoline, whatever things, your, your time at work, your, your time out of work. You, you know, we're going to cancel our, our, our rat trip this, this year. We're going to take the money and we're going to put it to missionary. Oh, oh, man, I don't want to go ride the top. I don't want to go ride the roller coaster. It's going to fall off and kill us all. Oh. I want to go get our pictures with these dressed up goons. Go to Walmart and bring a camera. You'll find plenty of goons. We saw one yesterday. And, well, that one, that one. You get your picture. I don't want my picture with that goon. That. I'm surprised I didn't have nightmares of whatever that thing was, but it didn't need to be out in the public. So the scribe says, look, it's not cows, lambs, sheep, because they're talking to the Lamb of God. That John said, take away the sin of the world. One day in 70 AD, this is all going to end. Now, we just dealt with the Sadducees. Remember I told you Sadducees died out with the temple? Because they, all their whole life was at the temple. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe in the resurrection. They believed in, give me your money. Oh, give me your money. I don't care if it's greed or it's just honey. I need your money. That's so funny. I remember early in my Christian walk, Lisa and I, we were just married. And there was this guy on television. I don't remember his name. He was like on 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. He's sitting in that chair smoking his stogie. And you would watch move programs with his horses. A half hour, 45 minutes his horses. And he'd come on smoking his stogie. You haven't given me enough money yet. Play it again. They go for another 30, 45 more minutes. I never heard that man give a message. I saw his horses. The love of money. And when Jesus saw that he answered, saw that he answered, saw that he answered, What on earth did this scribe do that Jesus saw? Let me ask you something. This can take some time. You ask somebody a question, and they answer the, the question. How do you see them answering a question? When Jesus saw that, he answered discreetly, wisely. So Jesus said, this man was wise. And he said unto him, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. 
If this guy continued to live right, I don't know if he did, you see him, he's on the path to being in the millennium and in the new earth if he's continued to do right and if he lived to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know what he did. And no man after that just asked him any questions. Now he put the, 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 the Sadducees, we don't believe in the resurrection. Or oh, in the resurrection, they shall be like the angels. We don't believe in angels. I don't care what you believe. You know how many people I dealt with as a street preacher? Oh, you know, I don't care what you believe. My wife used to tell me, you shouldn't be cutting. I ain't going to listen to their nonsense. And I'm not going to have people listening, listening to their nonsense. I will cut them off. Especially a Jehovah Witness. Don't come up to me. I ain't going to give them two words. The moment they say, well, we're JWs, we're Jehovah. That's it. You're only going to have two or three words, as much as you can get in. I want to keep coming back. You ask my family. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and Jesus didn't rebuke. Him. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and Jesus didn't rebuke. Him. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God, and Jesus didn't rebuke. But tell me the answer that Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Well, uh, now I said, Thomas said, and I don't let them speak. And then, well, well uh, uh, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Uh, uh, the Father, uh, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. I don't let them speak. Roman Catholic come up to me. Well, you know, Mary, all right, here's my Bible. Show me chapter and verse. I mean, people, uh, people come with me. Uh, you're drawing people away. And how many people have you led to Jesus? Oh, I, mean, I said I didn't say how many people you brought to church. I said how many people did you bring to Jesus? I'm rude and crude and rough and and and, and uh, um, what's that word called? Not aggravation. I am very much. Sarcastic. It's one of my weapons. Jesus gets to the answer that it got to the point. All right, we're done. Huh? Don't ask any more questions, please. I can see something about that. No, shut up. No, shut up. With their tail between their legs. 